Okay, uh, 1938 Chevy um, sedan. We want to talk about the rear suspension in this car and kind of where we ran into problems with it. Like we said on video number one, this was a pro-built car built about 20 years ago um, here at a chassis shop, a local chassis shop. And it took a while for things to start going wrong. Gary put a lot of miles on it for a while. And then after he did, um, the transmission completely wore out inside. We took it out of the car once, had it all rebuilt, and all the thrust washers um, inside it were completely disintegrated. And it wore out almost all the hard parts inside the Turbo 350. And at the time, um, that transmission was so old, we didn't rebuild it when they built the car originally. We didn't know if those problems were caused after the car was built or from when it was built the first time and really didn't. So we just replaced it at what needed replacing and put it all back together and put it in the car. We on, he only drove the car um, for about one and a half summers and uh, the whole thing was junk again. So now we knew that it had to do with this chassis belt and that's, that's why everything was pushing forward from the back of the car and caused it to wear out inside. So what I want to explain to everybody is this is a chassis engineering kit, the whole car. It all came, uh, all this whole, the Mustang two front suspension, everything that's in here was a chassis engineering kit. And the rear suspension in this car, they advertise it as 37 to 39 Chevy. Um, it's essentially almost a bolt-in kit um, to upgrade the rear suspension in these cars. So, I've always been a drag racer, run a lot of leaf spring cars over the years, and to talk about, in general, how leaf springs work, in general. So, if you have a leaf spring, it's usually arched like this, and you have the um, shackle in the back. When you go over a bump, the car goes down and that leaf spring flattens out, pushes, pushes the shackle back rearward. When that happens, your drive shaft should essentially pull out of the transmission. So you go over a bump, pulls it out. This car, this chassis engineering kit, because of the way they designed it, they used the original front leaf spring mount in this car. It bolt, mounts bolts on to the bottom of the frame rail in the original location. Because it does that, the leaf spring is a reverse arch. So instead of arching this way under the car, it arches this way. When you go over a bump, it pulls the shackle forward and drives the drive shaft in the back of the transmission. Did not realize that. Never knew that was going on until this transmission for the second time now has completely been disintegrated in the car from, you could see in the end of the drive shaft yoke when you looked inside it, that it was physically bottoming out on the back of the tail shaft where it came out of the transmission. And Gary was hearing some clunks and bangs when he was going over bumps in this car and could never figure out where the noise was coming from. So over this last fall, this car, we completely updated it now. Um, originally, we used a 1970 Nova 12 bolt rear end in the back of this car. And chassis engineering says you can either use the original multi leaf spring um, mount on that rear end or update it to a solid mount. Um, we originally, for ease of installation, used the original multi-leaf spring mount. I don't think that's a good idea. This, this car, you could actually see when we took it apart this last time to change all this stuff, that the leaf springs, be, they have an offset peg in them to mount the rear end in the bottom. It doesn't work right and the rear end was actually moving around in the car you could see where those you put a rubber pad in that on both sides of the leaf spring and you could see even though the u-bolts were tightened completely down and the u-bolts were bent um, and they were actually uh, the rear end was moving around so much there was movement marks on the rear end housing and all those mounts so we cut them off and put the universal Mopar style mount on the bottom of the rear end and solid mounted everything back in there um, now we're going to remake a drive shaft um, a little bit shorter so that we have enough movement when we're going over bumps that it doesn't bottom out in the bottom of the transmission. I'm going to crawl under the car and go over a few things with you. Um, just explain a little bit to you about that chassis engineering kit. Um, the things that I just explained to you, I'm going to show them to you under the car. We also installed now on the car the chassis engineering traction bars, which look a lot like a Caltrack bar, that they make specifically for this kit now. 
um, so you can bolt them on, which should also help keep the leaf springs in the rear end mounted and won't let it um, the pinion angle come up anymore when uh, you're on the throttle hard. So we did a lot of upgrades on this car after it's been done for 20 years and we're trying to get it to work right. Okay, as you can see, um, we have the camera set up under the car. Right now, this car is not on jack stands on the rear end. So the rear end is hanging underneath the car right now and you can see the leaf springs are essentially flat at this point. When the weight of the car is down on the wheels and tires, the leaf springs are actually uh, reversed arched. They're going the other direction when the weight's on it. And that's where we're getting into trouble with suspension movement, just because they're working the opposite way that a leaf spring normally would in a leaf spring car. You can see the mounts are on the bottom of the frame rail here, mounted down on the bottom. F-body cars and all the stuff we generally drag race, that spring pocket is way up in here. Um, mounted way up inside the frame rail which very much changes how the leaf springs work in the car and this is it's just how these cars were designed and they they use the original um spot to mount that leaf spring on the frame with their own mount this is the new updated traction bar that we put on the car which should really keep the rear end from wrapping up this car before when you used to get on the throttle hard the pinion of the rear end would actually um the pinion angle would wrap up so hard that the the front of the rear end yoke would actually hit the floor of the car when you would floor it under acceleration hard which wasn't good either so we we put this in to change that we updated to the new gas shocks that chassis engineering sells for this kit which they say are a little rougher ride but it should keep the car from squatting in the back too um, these are the chassis engineering um, leaf springs that they sell for this kit Everything on here is basically their kit. You can see when you buy the traction bars, you get the lower mount um, for the spring mount. So we put those in this year, and you can see here too, no more multi-leaf spring um, mount here that usually wraps all the way around the leaf spring. It's all welded in and solid mounted now. So this should be a really nice upgrade for this car. Keep the leaf springs from wrapping up and keeping the rear end from hitting the floor anymore. And hopefully now, if we can just get this drive shaft um, sorted out, get the right length drive shaft made, this car should work better than it ever has since it was built many years ago. Um, a couple weeks from now, we'll make another video about this as we're uh, explaining drive shaft length, how to measure that, and how to get this rear suspension working right. But for today, that's just a kind of a general overview of what we got going on in this car, where the problems came into play. Thanks for watching. Check out, 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 check out,